What's up guys, Cliff here from the Sunday Drive. In today's video, we're gonna show you how to change out the torque converter on my 2014 Silverado with the 6L80 transmission. Now we're currently in the process of removing the active fuel management system from my Silverado. We actually have the motor right here to my left that we're getting ready to put into the truck once we're done installing this torque converter. Now, most likely you are not gonna be pulling your motor to swap your torque converter. However, if you wanna know how to do that, you can watch the video above where we pull the motor out of my truck. And you can also watch another video where we show how to separate the transmission from the motor. We'll have both of those linked in the description as well. In this video, we're gonna focus on the installation procedure for actually installing the torque converter once you have access to it. Now, my truck has 108,000 miles on it, and the torque converter is still working at this point, but there is a known issue with the 6L80 torque converter where the internals will actually fall apart, clogging the lines, as well as the oil pump inside the transmission. And this can potentially lead to full transmission failure, requiring a full rebuild or a new transmission. To remedy this issue, I am swapping out to the torque converter that came in the 2012 through 2015 Camaros, the 6L90 torque converter. This also came in some of the CTSV models. And this has much more robust internals and hopefully won't experience the same failure. Either way, it's a brand new torque converter, so I should have a lot of life left in it. Flipping the torque converter around, you'll immediately notice there's a major difference in that this has six bolt locations and the 6L80 torque converter only has three. However, three of these will line up with the existing holes on the flex plate. And if you really want to, there are conversion kits where you'll replace the flex plate with ones that have holes for the six bolts. I've read in multiple forums, talked to multiple people, and they've all said, including Circle D Performance, that you can just use the stock flex plate with three of the bolts and you'll be able to run just fine. If you are doing a very high horsepower build, you may want to consider swapping out flex plates and we'll have a link to those conversion plates in the description of this video. Here's the stock torque converter and you can see just the three bolt holes that it currently has. Now, this was sitting outside for about a month while we were working on the motor, deleting the DOD and recording all the videos for that, so it's definitely rusted up some, um, but we are swapping it out, so that is A-OK. -okay. Now, before pulling this out, we wanna measure the depth of where those bolt holes are in relation to the outside of the bell housing so that we know when we're fully seated with the new torque converter. So we have a very accurate straight edge that we're holding against the outside of the bell housing and, and holding a tape measure up, we're about one inch back. So now that we know the depth, we can go ahead and slide this one out. Now, these are very heavy. <clears throat> Just try to keep it off the splines, keep the weight up. This one's actually a lot less heavier than the new one. So, um, Pete, help. Yeah, you're not gonna do it. <laughs> I always use Amsoil products for all of my vehicles and we wanna make sure that we pre-fill this a little bit. Now looking down in there, there already is some transmission fluid in there, but we wanna add about a quart to this. And you're gonna have to move it around to get the fluid to go in. As you add fluid, it's basically gonna come all the way to the top and then you're gonna to need to spin it and this will get the fluid to go into the different areas inside of your torque converter. Looking at the transmission, there's two splines you need to match up. There's this one right here and then this one closest to me. And then all the way at the back, you can kind of see there's two nubs and I'll circle them in the video. There's one up there at the about 10 o'clock position. And then down here around the five o'clock position is another nub. And I believe those are the two teeth that engage the oil pump. And that's what you need to line up the torque converter with. And you don't want to push the torque converter in too firmly um, or I've heard you can damage the oil pump. These are the two grooves or cutouts on the shaft that need to engage with those two uh, teeth we showed you on the oil pump. So we need to install this with these in the roughly 11 and five o'clock positions. Now we know that we need these about an inch back. 
There we go. So we just checked the depth and we are fully seated in there. As you saw, I had to basically slowly rotate it around while applying an inward force to get it to seat into those last two grooves that we showed you guys. I did check with a shop that's installed a couple of these in 6L80 transmissions, and they said there's no tuning of the transmission required. This is pretty much a bolt-on. Um, if that ends up being differently, I will let you guys know down in the description. But as far as I know, there is no tuning required to make this work. That's it, guys. That is how you install the torque converter. Now, obviously, you do need to gain access to this area, so you're either going to need to do that by dropping the transmission or pulling the motor. If you are doing a DOD delete, <clears throat> great time to pull the motor out, give yourself plenty of room to work on the motor, and also access to the transmission. In preparation of this video, several guys reached out to me and suggested I replace the torque converter because they said uh, they all had failures after 110,000 miles. Between the 110 and 160,000 mile range, their torque converters failed, in some cases requiring full transmission rebuild. So if you have access to it, definitely change it out as soon as you can. Um, especially once you're past 100,000 miles. As I mentioned earlier, I'll try to find that service bulletin and leave it down in the description. I did talk with a GM service tech and they said the procedure, if the failure should occur, is to replace the torque converter, the oil pump, as well as the oil return line. So um, in some cases, as I mentioned, it can lead to entire transmission rebuilds being required. If this video was helpful, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Uh, we really appreciate it. And if there's any other videos or things that you want to see done on my Silverado, please let us know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you here next time.